Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number 20 in our Arduino tutorial series where you are building a non-axis inertial measurement system. I'm going to need you to pour yourself a nice big mug of iced coffee. You're going to need it to get through today's lesson. No, actually today's lesson I think is a kind of fun one. It's going to be bringing together a lot of the stuff that we've been doing. And if you remember where we left off in lesson number, uh, let's see, where are we here? Uh, if you remember where we left off in lesson number 19 was the earlier lesson, uh, we had kind of gotten to the point that we could do uh, roll or we could do pitch and yaw. And we could visualize that. Let's see if we still have that visualization running. Yeah. Okay, so we got to where we were visualizing in VPython the yaw. So as we yaw in the real world, we're yawing in the virtual world. That as I'm pointing north in the virtual, in the real world, pointing north in the virtual world. And then we also could reflect uh, changes in pitch. Nose up, nose down pitch with roll and things seem to kind of work pretty good up to about 45 degrees remember we had put a lot of assumptions as we were deriving our trigonometry and so these roll pitches and yaws are just kind of approximations but you can see for the sake of just sort of a visual demonstration we're doing pretty good now the thing is though that so far we have not incorporated roll now on the Arduino side in the BNO055 side, we are measuring and calculating roll. We are sending roll to Python, but in our, Py in our vPython simulation, we haven't incorporated the geometry and the trigonometry for roll yet. And the reason is it's actually a little bit of kind of a tough problem that if you think about this body, this rigid body being represented by a vector, and we've labeled this vector k. If I just tell vPython the tip, where the tip is, where the tip of the vector is, and then vPython puts that tip at x, y, and z, okay, as x, y, and z change, the x, y, and z position of the tip changes, vPython can move the simulation to match it. All right, now this is why we haven't done roll yet, because you see that x, y, and z, if this were just a uh, two-dimensional vector, that if I just kept track of that endpoint, I could move that anywhere that I wanted to just by keeping track of the uh, tip there the X, Y, and Z of the tip. But if you look at this, let's say that I told it to put the tip right here. That tip is going to stay exactly in that same position, but there's a huge number of different body orientations that could exist and still have this tip at a unique X, Y, and Z location. So what we have to do is, and if you think about that, okay, so three numbers, and I can get X, Y, and Z, I can get the position of the tip of this, but now I've got to deal with rotation. And so if you look at this up vector that we called V, this up vector V, V indeed is always perpendicular to K, V is always perpendicular to K, all right, but V is not always pointing up. V could be pointing towards the site, okay? So we've got to deal with that. And if you think about it, this is, it, we got to reduce this down to math so that we can tackle it. What we are doing is we are rotating a vector. We are rotating the vector V around the vector K. Now we know where k is, and k doesn't care where you spin, k is k, but now we have to rotate v around k. And what that is called is that math was handled by someone known as <coughs> Rodriguez, okay? And Rodriguez figured out how to solve this problem. And what he did was, like, if this is v, if this is v, just right after we put K at some X, Y, and Z location, then he tells you 
what the new v vector would be, what the new v vector would be after rotation, and he calls that the rotated v vector. Now let's look at what how he is defining things here. Man, I need to I need to zoom in on this so you can see it, don't I? I try to be mindful of that, but sometimes I am not perfect about it. Man, I guess I better get out of your way as well. Okay, so uh, let's see what he says. He says v is a vector in three-dimensional space. Okay, well we have this v vector in three-dimensional space. So far so good. And k is a unit vector. Okay, we've got this unit vector k. Remember we've always said that this vector we're going to have a unit of one. <coughs> so we've got this k vector. And uh, k is a unit vector that is describing the axis of rotation of v. Well, that's exactly what we have. We have k, it's one long, and then v is going to rotate about the axis that is formed by the vector k. And so that's exactly what we want. And it is looking at rotations of the angle theta. Now the one little confusing thing is we call theta pitch, but now by his definition that theta would be what we are calling roll. So do you see what we have here? We have an equation for calculating the new the new uh, v vector after a rotation of theta degrees, and that's exactly what we need. And that rotated vector is the vector v, which we have, times cosine of the amount that it was rolled, times k cross v, okay, k cross v, times the sine of the angle between them. All right, now we have this other term out here, which is k times k dot v onto 1 minus cosine theta. But if you look at our k and our v, we've set this up where k and v are orthogonal or perpendicular to each other, and the dot product of orthogonal vectors is 0. That term goes away. So what are we left with? I have k, which we already know. We set that up in the earlier lessons. I have v which we already know we set up in the earlier lessons, I'm going to calculate the rotated v, and it's going to depend on the amount of rotation, which we already know because that's roll. Okay, uh, and then k cross v, we know that in sign of the rotation. Man, we've got this. Okay, so what we've got to do is to start out with, what you need to do is you need to start where we left off in lesson number 19. So go to lesson number 19, and what you need to do is you need to get the Arduino code. And in this Arduino code, remember we were approximating <coughs> roll, pitch, and yaw. And then you remember we were sending that. Is this the right one? Non-axis 19. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So go to uh, go to. 9-axis IMU lesson number 19, okay? And then what you're going to do is you're going to get the Arduino code and put it into Arduino. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go to the vPython code and you're going to put that into vPython. And so what you will end up with, and I better kill this one, right? I better kill this one, so I'm going to do Control F2 to kill the program. Okay, this was the software that we ended up with in lesson number 19 on the vPython side. And then on the Arduino side, let's see, this is not it. It is this one over here on the Arduino side where we printed uh, roll, pitch, yaw, and then we printed out the calibration numbers for acceleration gyro, magnetometer, and system. And so this was the code. You can get it on toptechboy.com, lesson number 19. You can grab the code there. And then this will be sending to Python, roll, pitch, and yaw. Then when we run this program that we ended up with in lesson number 19, <coughs> we are able to get that simulation 
where we can simulate the yaw and the pitch, but now we've got to deal with roll. So let's come over here on the Python side and you can see that we are reading down here in the loop, we are reading that data packet from Arduino. We are splitting off the characters that we don't want, the nuisance characters. Then we're splitting that string on the comma. And roll was the first one, so it would be the split array position zero, pitch is split array uh, position one, and yaw is position two. Okay, then what we do is now that we have roll pitch and yaw from the Arduino, we start forming these vectors, right? And this k vector, we went through the derivation of the k vector, right? If it's up like this, we've got to project it down on the xz plane by taking the cosine of the pitch. And then we, once we have it down there, the projection, then we take the cosine of the yaw, uh, multiply it by cosine of yaw to get the x component, sine of pitch to get the y component, and sine yaw, cosine pitch to get the z component. So that gives us the position of this k vector, kind of like no matter how we move it around, we can get the orientation of this k vector. Then we just make a helper vector that we call the y vector, the y vector is the vector perpendicular to the ground and no matter what we do with the body y stays here but y then helps us create s the side vector which is going to be coming out this way because we just cross y we cross k and y and that gives us this perpendicular vector okay and then if we cross <coughs> if we cross uh that side vector that we just created with our original k vector, we will get this up vector that we call v. So you see, we are already in the software creating the v vector, which is our up vector, and the k vector, which is our out vector. Now what we have to do is we have to create the v rotated okay the V rotated vector so we will come here and we are going to say V rotated vector and what did that equal we need to go back and we need to look at that uh, we need to go back and we need to look at this uh, Rodriguez rotation and it was V cosine theta. I wonder if I can make this where I can see the code at the same time. Uh, trying to get a good view here rather than try to do it separately. So <clears throat> I need to pull up my pie window and I will for right now make it smaller. Okay, that's the equation we want and then I'll make this smaller. Okay. Now, V rotation vector is equal to V, which we already have, times cosine of theta. Well, for us, that theta is rho, right? So it's V cosine rho, okay? And then plus K, uh, how do we do that? Cross K, comma V times the sine of rho. All right. And let's just make sure that we that we're thinking about this right. V is the unit vector and K is the vector of axis of rotation. So yes, K is the axis that we're rotating about, about and we're rotating V about K. So you see kind of seeing where we were going, I named my vectors so that they would line up with this equation. Thinking ahead, wasn't I? Okay, so V rotation, we now have this rotated vector. All right, we now have this rotated vector. So what do we need to do? Well, the front arrow axis, this front arrow axis, its direction is still going to be K. Okay, the side arrow axis is going to be, I think we'll have to fix that in a minute, but let's just get the body working uh, first. Okay, now the up arrow is no, the up arrow on the axis, it's no longer going to be V, it is going to be what? V 
the rotated. And my object axis, which is this overall body, it is no longer, uh, yeah, the my, my object axis is still K, okay. But my object up, the my object up is no longer V, that orthogonal vector is now what? It's now V rotated, V rotated. <clears throat> so I think everything is going to work here, except I think that side vector is probably not going to spin. But let's just go ahead and try this and see what happens. I will need you to hold your breath on this one. This is going to be a tough one. <sighs> oh, is it going to run? Oh, we got an error. Oh, and it was that new thing we put in. What did it name? V cosine. Oh, oh, oh. I see. It's V times cosine roll. Did you guys catch that? That was a rookie mistake, wasn't it? That was a rookie mistake. Okay. Let's come up and run this crazy thing again. And uh, let's see. Where did that go? There it is. So let's bring this down. Okay, we've got to sling it around to get those magnetometers oriented. You know, in a real application, it's like, oh, it's no problem slinging it around. I have this mounted on the top of an ambulance on a positional antenna, and it is not so easy to swing this thing around when it is affixed to the ambulance. Okay, now the one other thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to spin the camera view so that north on my simulation matches north in the real world. So let's make sure we didn't break anything. Yaw is yawing. Uh-huh. Okay. Pitch is pitching. Okay. This is the moment of truth. We are going to roll. Boom! Did Rodriguez know what he was doing with the Rodriguez rotation or what? And look at that. Okay. We are rolling. Okay. We are rolling, okay, pitching and rolling. And like I say, you see this orange vector? The orange vector is not rolling because we didn't set it to roll. We just set the body and the other things. We'll go back and fix that in a minute, but let's look at that. Oh, man. Yawing, pitching, rolling rolling. Now let's look and see. I'm going to see like a roll. And now, I mean, this is a pitch. All right, let me see, make sure you can see this. This is a pitch. And then I'm going to roll around that. Now, what we know is, is that the, geom the trigonometry is going to break down when we start getting above 45 degrees. But look at that. That is pretty darn slick, isn't it? Let's say if I get up here and roll. And what's going to happen is the trigonometry is going to break at some point. But this is just pretty darn impressive. Let's just see. Let's just do something crazy, turn it upside down. And yeah, as we turn it upside down, the trigonometry breaks. And, you know, you get gimbal lock and all types of different things. But for up to 45 degrees, this looks pretty darn interesting. Now let's go in and that orange vector, right, that was that side vector. So I think what we need to do with that side vector, ah, this is very dangerous to do this on the fly, but let's just see if I can kind of fix this just on the fly by winging it. But what we see is we have made the side axis to be S. Okay, but really, I think it needs to be, it needs to be uh, the, the K dot V rotated. Let's say cross, uh, this is the side arrow axis, should be the cross product of I want it pointing this way, so I should cross K, and instead of V, <coughs> it's going to be V rotation. So K comma V rotated. Because you see, that way, when V rotates, then this side arrow is going to stay orthogonal to these two because I'm doing the dot product. Let's see if that works. It's always scary to try to do three-dimensional trigonometry on the fly, okay? 
Usually I do things ahead, and this one I'm just going to have to kind of wing it. Okay, so I'm going to do Control F2 and say yes. Okay. Let's see. Come back over. Where are we? I guess I got to just run it, huh? Okay, so we got to sling it around to get those things calibrated. <coughs> and then remember in our simulation red, the red vector was north. And so let me point that, change the camera view where it's pointing north. Now let's turn it where you can see the orange vector. Okay, and now we're going to rotate. Boom! Did you see that? Look at that. Look at that. Everything is moving now. Everything is moving. All right. This has been a pretty exciting project, right? I just always have to move it till it breaks. That is like, okay, you see above 45 degrees, it starts getting kind of confused with things. Okay. Uh, but I think up to 45 degrees, it is pretty, uh, pretty interesting. Okay. You know, we did a lot of approximations when we were doing the, the geometry there. Okay, so this is kind of a milestone that we have kind of a reasonable demonstration level uh, orientation of a rigid body in three space with some assumptions on the trigonometry where it works sort of, a, a, it kind of works over a limited range. But we're going to come back next week and we're going to solve the whole enchilada, right? We are really, really going to make this thing work very, very well the next time. And you know, we're going to get rid of that jitter, and we're going to get rid of these places where the thing breaks and doesn't, uh, doesn't do right. We're going to solve it really, really, really well. And, and the way we're going to do this is we're going to use quaternions. But I didn't want to start with quaternions because you can't really visualize quaternions. And so what we have to do is we have to kind of get you under Understanding roll, pitch, and yaw. I think after this exercise, you should understand roll, pitch, and yaw. I really think that you should. Okay. And now that you sort of understand roll, pitch, and yaw, and you understand three dimensional orientations, and you've gotten familiar with uh, V Python, I think next week you'll be ready to do the uh, to do the quaternions, and then we'll have a really, really nice, uh, really, really nice simulation. Okay. I kind of had fun today. I hope you guys had fun. Leave me a comment down below. Think about giving us a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel. Share this with other people, man. Try to get some more people going. You'll know, go back and look at those Arduino lessons I did. And let's let's try to get kids doing more building and making and creating and less sitting around, you know, drinking milkshakes and playing video games. Okay, let's let's get kids, let's get kids building and doing. More doing and less watching. Okay, that's my new theme. More building and less watching. Okay, Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.